key portions of the Affordable Care Act set to go into effect, a showdown brewing for a September fight between the president and congressional Republicans. In his weekly address, the president accused Republicans of trying to, quote, gum up his landmark health law and jeopardizing the federal government if the law isn't defunded or taken off the books. Think about that. They're actually having a debate between hurting Americans who will no longer be denied affordable health care just because they've been sick and harming the economy and millions of Americans in the process. And many Republicans are more concerned with how badly this debate will hurt them politically than they are with how badly it'll hurt the country. Meanwhile, the San Francisco Chronicle reports many people uninformed about Obamacare are falling prey to scams. The scams can take the form of emails, phone calls from people pretending to be representatives of the federal government and even solicitors going door to door trying to sign people up for fake medical cards or seeking personal information. Uh, Sid, what do you think about what's going to happen this fall? Oh, it's hard to predict. I mean, obviously, with respect to the budget showdown, I don't think the president's going to budge. I don't see why he will or would, because this is his signature legislation. I understand he's delayed certain components of it, but if they're saying delay the whole thing for a year, I doubt that he would do that. But, you know, the weekly radio address was very interesting, in part because we're at this point right now where there really is a, you know, sabotaging going on of the plan, or or an attempt to sabotage the plan. The biggest move now is to get people to burn their Obamacare cards as if they exist, uh, but also to encourage young people not to sign up for insurance, just to avoid the exchanges altogether as a way to make sure that the plan, is the overall bill is sabotaged. And so this is a very critical juncture, and it's not just about this budget showdown. It's about literally the implementation of the law and getting people signed up and making sure that the system works. Yeah, I do want to point out, it's not as if, like, the people against it are getting traction with these delays. These delays are separate from the movement against it. They're just delays in the implementation. Correct. two unrelated things. And it all comes to a head on October the 1st. Al, I know you had a chance to speak to Grover Norquist over the weekend. As we're talking about here, it's like each side trying to call the other one's bluff, bluff, that is, come October 1st. Yeah, it is. Uh, Grover now is into this, let's delay the whole thing for a year. Uh, A couple months ago, it was let's kill uh, Obamacare as part of the uh, debt ceiling or continuing uh, resolution. They won't do that. That wouldn't fly. I don't think I agree with Sam. The delay is not going to fly either. Here's the danger here. The Republicans privately believe that Obama is a lousy negotiator and usually he caves. And the Democrats in the White House privately believe that the, that the GOP has a really bad hand here. They've suffered in the past. They won't do it again. Uh, if both can persist in, in those beliefs, uh, there really could be a train wreck sometime in November. This is where I thought Newt made a good point last week, Newt Gingrich, that if the Republicans don't like it, they've got to put forward an alternative, particularly on how to extend coverage to the 30 million Americans. It can't just be against Obamacare. Then you've got to have a positive alternative, and, and we really haven't heard and that. Let me just say, off of Al's point, the timing actually works fairly decently for Obama here, and that there's two showdowns. One is over funding the government, and then the next one, a couple months later, maybe a month and a half later, is over the debt ceiling. He'd much rather go off the cliff when it's with respect to a government shutdown than the debt ceiling. So if it comes down to calling someone's bluff. My guess is that the president would say, fine, I'll, I'll let my bluff be called. Let's shut down the government rather than let's default on our loans or, or let's default on our debt. They're both very dangerous tactics. Yeah, but one is super dangerous and one is dangerous. And that would be the debt ceiling is super dangerous. Super All right. dangerous. Super dangerous. Let's move on to another bluff being called. Sure. So can you imagine a Republican primary where Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, and Mark Levin run the presidential debates? If the RNC yes. has its way, it could become a reality. Uh, the Washington Examiner reporting that the conservative radio hosts are being seriously looked at as the 2016 debate moderators. Meanwhile, the RNC is going to ban, not partner with CNN and NBC from hosting presidential primary debates because of the network's plans to run Hillary clinton theme biopics. Now, the committee voted unanimously on Friday to exclude the networks, and while it was reported that Fox was in talks with NBC to produce the miniseries, the New York Times, now reporting the studio will not take part. And according to the Times, CBS and Fox networks passed on picking up the miniseries. Previous defined the RNC's vote as part of an effort to take back the primary process from the last cycle. 
I'm trying to build a party that's year round. I'm trying to fix a data and digital operation. I'm trying to get a hold of a primary process and a debate debacle uh, that, as you know, I've called a traveling circus. The fact of the matter is, I've got to protect this party and our nominees. Look, if you're not going to have 23 debates, uh, these guys are making it a lot easier for us to, to pare that down to a reasonable number in front of people and entities that actually give a darn about the future of the Republican you were, Party. You were also but Al, I thought that speaking only to your base was not a way to win. Well, I am just simply outraged at this discriminatory and exclusionary policy. Well, I mean, where's Glenn Beck? Glenn Beck really has to be in the mix here somewhere. Look, um, uh, this, is, uh, this is, I think, probably a lot to do uh, about things that uh, are going to take a different turn. I don't like these, uh, uh, whatever you call them, biopics. I don't think it's really such a great idea. But, but the debates, I mean, I like Reince Priebus, but the idea that debates were what killed the Republicans last time is nonsense. It wasn't the circus. It was the animals in the circus. They had bad candidates. Uh, Hillary and Obama debated through May of 2008. It didn't hurt them. Uh, so I, I, my guess is this is going to shake out in a much different way. And debates are determined in the end not by the RNC chairman, but by the front runner. If the front runner participates in a debate, there are debates. Al, if he I, or I she would think Hillary would d disagree with you over the didn't hurt them remark about the debates between her and, and President Obama. I think, uh, you know, obviously President Obama came out on top after that, but it didn't make anybody from the Democratic National Committee challenge sure. how many debates they were going to have. And here we have the RNC now pulling through on their autopsy results, which they wanted less primary debates. They wanted less bloodletting of their potential contenders. And I thought the Republicans were about capitalism. I mean, isn't that what these, these biopics are about? Money. It's not about, sure. you know, Ryan's is saying it's tipping the thumb on the scales uh, of the election, but... This is about capitalism. I mean, I th I, this whole thing is so silly to me. It, uh, Chairman Priebus had the option to actually see the biopics before deciding to cancel the debates. I mean, he could have made an assumption about what was going to be in them, could have assumed that they were all pro-Hillary love fest, but he still could have watched them or seen something about it and then said, okay, actually, that's, un you know, that's unethical, it's not journalistic, we're canceling the debates. He didn't do it. This is for raising money. It's for following through on what you're talking about, which is to limit the debates. I think Al's right. I think it's sort of overstated. But, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's amazing to me how much traction he's getting out of this because it's such a stupid issue. The candidates could do the debates if they wanted to. It's just wouldn't be RNC sanctioned. Mm -hmm. He literally has very little power right. over this whole process, but he's making a big stink of it. It's up to the, st the states can do what they want. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would disagree with that in one respect. I do think the debates have mattered. I think you're right about Hillary. I mean, the definitive moment of that debate was when she uh, sided, oh, she couldn't answer Elliot Spitzer, a question on Elliot Spitzer's ID law for undocumented workers. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2012, Mitt Romney famously said uh, his self deportation line during the debates. So there are moments where these things can matter. I, I think the, the, the quality of the candidates is far but more. But doesn't it also matter, though, the quality of the candidates being hooked up with the RNC and who Reince wants to ultimately steer with the funding, with the money that he's been able to sure. amass? Because he's pretty good. Uh, you know, he spends. Well, there's no, there's five no like, hours perfect the formula for how this works. You know? There's no perfect formula for how this works, but it's, you know, he's just trying to limit the amount of debates, is basically what it comes down to. Yeah, the other major story.